uh, Marilyn Robinson, who a few years ago won the uh, Pulitzer Prize for Literature. And she was the one who first began to say to me at a meeting we had where we were both speaking, speakers, uh, have, you, have you ever given any thought to this? The other thing that happened was that I was in England and speaking at the University of Warwick, uh -huh. uh, which is dead central England. It's very near Stratford on uh, Avon. Uh -huh. It's on the Avon River itself. Lovely, lovely little, little community. And uh, speaking at the University of Warwick, and one of the sociologists that was there that was anxious to have me there, an atheist, had been the expert witness for the fundamentalist who brought the case to court in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, uh, when the, this, the case was brought up as to whether or not intelligent design could be taught in the public school. Um, he came over, even though he was an atheist, atheist, and witnessed on behalf of these fundamentalist Christians who you know, wanted intelligent design or creationism taught. And his reasoning was this. He said, studies in America indicate that at least 50% of the American people believe in a six-day creation. He said, can you really say you are educating your students if you haven't introduced them to the explanation of creation that 50% of the American people believe? I mean, and the, his other question was, what are you so afraid of? Uh, I mean, if, and you say, but it's not science. Fine. And the kid ought to be able to say, this is what Darwin taught. This is intelligent dying. Uh, is dying. And this is creationism. And here's Lamarckian theory, which is still another theory. And isn't, isn't an education to see all of these points of view and ask, which one has the most scientific support? You shouldn't be afraid of it. If you believe in science, you in fact have to come up with scientific proof or scientific disproof, and you've got to leave it to the, to the students to, to decide. And in the end, evolution is defined by Darwin is a theory. Nobody ever said it's been proven. It's a theory. So why can't other theories uh, be presented as well? Is it good education to say only one theory is acceptable? Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't believe in a six-day creation, but I have great respect for those who do. And uh, I think you can make the case, and uh, people have what made the case. What do you believe? How long do you think it took? Well, I don't believe in a six-day creation for a very simple reason. It's so simple that you'll laugh when I give it to you. Days are re measured, given you don't have clocks, by the rising and setting of the sun. Agreed? Right. Well, the sun doesn't get created until the fourth day. So how did they measure a day before the sun was even in existence? Fair question. Point being that I'm sure that this represents eras of time. Uh, and I don't know how long those eras are. And I don't care whether God took 50 million years to do it, or 50 years to do it, or six days to do it. All I know is God did it. Yeah. That God is at work in the process, and I don't know. And of course, you having talked to you earlier about God's concept of time, with God it doesn't make any difference whether it's 50, or as the Bible says, the thousand years are as a day, and the day is a thousand years. Right. I don't know why we get all hung up I on it. I don't either, because I just don't care. I think that's what we need to, and so many Christians are all hot and bothered over this. But I think we do have to be afraid of social Darwinism, because when you start beginning to think that the fittest should survive, that has implications for human existence that's right. scary. A lot of people end up thinking that some people are more fit to survive than others, that some people are more valuable than others. Every single human being is of infinite worth to God. I believe that. Yeah, okay. I don't, I mean, I just don't care about six days or six days. You got it. All I know is I'm here in the, because nothing can be proved. It's a theory. I mean, yeah, you can't sure. go back. Yeah. Now, I think the, the, the Big Bang can pretty much be 
proof yeah. because of Einstein's yeah. expanding yeah. thing. We, we, but I think God spoke and bang, there it was. Something had to flip it. the switch. That's right. I think God flipped the switch. Yep. I mean, what was going on before that little thing? It, yeah. You know. I mean, something. Something. Something was created out of nothing, which is exactly what the Bible exactly. says. Exactly. You know. Exa something. You know, when it comes to creation, I always say this. There are four basic questions that we ask about human existence. Where did we come from? How did we get here? Why are we here? Where are we going? Where are we, going? we find in Christ and in the scriptures where we came from. We find in scriptures and in Christ where we're going. And why we're here. And we find in Jesus why we're here. The one thing that the Bible doesn't tell us is how we got here. Leave it to the scientists to keep on doing the research on this one. I'm willing to leave that in the hands of the scientists. And if you think that's the most important question, you've got a problem. The most important question is, did we come from God? Does God have a purpose for us? And do we have an ultimate destiny in him? These are the questions. Um, I love this story. Uh, did I tell you this story about Einstein being on a train? Maybe. Uh, Einstein uh, left Princeton where he was living, got on a train heading north. Didn't have his ticket. Didn't have his ticket. Yes, you told that last time. Tell it again. Somebody uh, might have missed it. Yeah, well, it's, it's worth telling. Yeah. You know, he, he's, a, I'm just looking at this dog. Stanley smells. Yeah, I, I know, I but smell. it's a smell. It's a good smell. He's such a sweet boy. He is a, he'll he's licking lick me down. He's licking me down. <laughs> um, uh, Einstein was on this train, and... Um, and the conductor came by and he couldn't find his ticket. He's searching all around. The conductor said, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. We know who you are. Don't worry about your ticket. We know who you are. About 10 minutes later, he's coming back and Einstein's still looking for the ticket under the seat, looking in, the, in his jacket, and frantically looking for his ticket. And the conductor said, Dr. Einstein, I told you. You don't have to worry about your ticket. I know who you are. He said, Einstein stood up, looked him in the face, right in the face, and said, young man, I know who I am. I want to know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> and in a sense, Jesus has the answer as to who I am, and Jesus has the answer as to where, where I'm, going. I'm going. Amen.